Welcome to Home Cinema and Tech Review. In this video, I'm going to talk about what could go wrong with the autofocus projectors. I know this is not a too interesting topic, but it will be interesting when I say the details, because right now we are projecting image from Wombo Mossart 1, and it's an autofocus projector. So autofocus system works by its own. Let me just show you, and I've already re reviewed this product. So if you move it and change the place, like keep it around here and get it here, probably it will do autofocus adjustment. Let me just, yes, it's trying to autofocus by projecting a black and white, very contrasted image. Right now, the focus is quite good. So this projector is managing the focus, but what if an autofocus projector fails or is it failing? Can you understand the failure? Of course you can. If you have good eyesight, you definitely get the idea. But if you know your limitations, for example, we tried it after four meters, 4.1 meters, let's just say four meters and 10 centimeters, uh, one blue Mozart one has created around three meter length of visual and it failed to really focus, e exact focus. Let's just say it did focus, but it didn't have the ability. Even though we can do this movement with the manual focus on the remote, you can see the pixels, but it's not basically with, by the way, any of the autofocus projectors like uh, what my Xiaomi 4K Ultra Short Throw Dip already has that, JM Go models, and many projectors have autofocus functions. So when you have autofocus function, you have a camera for focusing, so it does the automatic focus for you. But when you do the manual, you see a step for the Wombo, maybe for other models, of course, they have some sort of spec uh, for you to understand the focus quality. But when you hit the buttons and when you get close, you see these pixelations. So if you just sit right beside, just like me, to the screen that you project, and if you move with the focus, you see how it loses and how it softens and how it just gets sharp. That's normal. But the main issue is, you see the ghosting up close. You can't see the ghosting from a distance, okay? The place that you watch is not ideal for you to focus. Like you focus and you come in and take a look because the small ghosting effects will have the, uh, you know, tiring effect for your eyes. And also it's not healthy. I made a detailed video about bad lensed uh, projectors. So what I'm getting in this video is, what I'm trying to teach you and tell you, by the way, this is the place that we should be looking for. If the ghosting is too much around the corners of the texts and uh, maybe you can project a JPEG image like 4K, 8K JPEG high-res image instead of a video or trying to look at the logo and the focus location of the projector, you can project a perfect uh, image so you can check out the pixels that you know or type, sharp types also it's a good thing for you to check out the edges. If you don't see too much of a ghosting, then it's okay. But there is a certain amount of exception that the brands do. For example, many of the smaller brands, let's just say under $500 range projectors, new projectors tend to declare they have autofocuses. And I've tried like Wombo T2 Max, Wombo Mozart 1, TT. Even though they have manuals, not every projectors, I'm not talking just about the Wombo, but every projector has a stepping motor inside. So the stepping system, if it works properly, there's no problem. But if it doesn't have the same stepping system, just like this Wombo here, because each two points have like four steps for, from each other. So three or four steps creates uh, for you a quite a bit of good space moment. Like you're moving the objective one lens to another, quite a bit of slow. Let me just give you a proper example by opening up the studio lights. Right now, I'm in the studio and, and you know me, I have a lot of lenses in the studio and I'm going to try to find some of the lenses to show you up close. So, for example, this is, I'm getting too close to the camera, I know. This is a camera lens and I'm getting close for you to understand. This is the zoom ring and look how it moves. It moves quite a bit. So every step, you can think of these parts like steps, okay? When you turn it, how much turn do I do? 
let's just check. I am doing around, uh, if it's a 360, I'm doing more than 180. Half uh, round or half circle, I can say. So what this means is actually how much step you got defines how much detail that you can create on the focus. That's why some people still prefer manual focus uh, projectors because you can move them around. And also the expensive projectors, this is a little bit crazy awkward. I know I'm on the corner because I don't want to get hit by the light from the Wombo. So still, a lot of the people probably prefer the bigger projectors with big lenses and those big lenses have tend to have ability to focus slowly. So that way you can really create non-ghosting effect, like perfectly focus on the flat surface. And if you have no ghosting effect, it won't be tiring your eyes. It's not about the full HD. It's not about the 4K. Let's just think about it. 10 years ago, we have like, probably I had uh, 5D Mark II, Mark III. That's maybe not 10 years, but those are old cameras and megapixels wasn't high back then, but those cameras have same camera lenses. So if you focus properly, even the resolution is the same, you know you got the sharpest possible optical image. So optical thing is the most important part. And of course, the sensor, the imagery behind the technology, like the HDR and stuff, that's also important. But the focus is the most important part for our eyes. Others are contrast, dynamic range, whatever those are. It's not going to be affect our health, our eyesight, and also it will be tiring for uh, our head. Like your brain will, you, you can't enjoy the uh, same amount with a sharp image and a little bit blurred image. That's why I created why you should, uh, a video for you, don't hurt your eyes with bad, cheap projectors. By the way, the, the Wombo Mozart part, uh, Mozart one is not a cheap and a bad projector. It's a good projector. That's why I'm referring to like It's not the perfect projector and we today just I realized it cannot focus Be after the four meters, but even though this is a good focus projector But what if your copy is bad? So every company has some sort of uh, margin for error. So autofocus It's not going to work exactly with each unit probably so because it's moving automatically, it's not your hand. Maybe the glass is the same, but the system is not working exactly the same. The stepping motor could uh, a little bit forward, a little bit backward. So the lens is on the front, on the back a little bit. Steps are might not be the same. So you could have some sort of a glow effect when you get up close. Like I told you, you can get up close and you can get the image effect. So for that, what do you do? you get go back, okay, you go to something like 4K or 8K, wild birds, open up something qualified, good picture quality. If it's a commercial, I'm sorry for that. Yes, it's an arm company commercial. Let's skip that thing. So we know the quality of this channel, 8K scenic relaxation channel. So I'm going to hit quality. Again, this is the full HD quality. This is the top notch quality of the video, you can maybe use a dongle and give it a 4K signal. But I know right now this is a focused image for full HD, but it might not be exactly sharp because the size is too big. This is a 2.88 uh, meters of huge screen, near three meters of screen. And for the full HD it's quite big, but even though this is a very, very sharp image and I'm not playing with the settings. So if I've explained enough, I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget the thumbs up and like the videos and also try to comment as simple comments. Thank you will be enough because YouTube looks for the comments too. So try to support the channel. This is my hobby channel in a very busy day. I'm trying to answer all your questions. This is my hobby, just like you guys. So try to support me as much as you can. I don't get paid most of the videos. So these tutorials coming to you for free, just help me out to grow the channel together, grow a community. And if we have more sponsors, probably I will make giveaways too, because I don't need many of the devices that I show you in the videos, because most of the time I create my own setup and that's done. So hope to see you in the next video, home cinema and tech review. Bye.